So I've been quite nervous starting to write this script and review. I have so many mixed feelings about Assassin's Creed Odyssey and it's hard for me to find the right perspectives to tackle a review on this game with. On one hand, I'm an Assassin's Creed purist who does and always will live in the past of nostalgia and lore of the games gone by, but wants the best for the future of the franchise. Another part of me has moved on well from the young Assassin's Creed fan and just plays games for what they are. Both have different perspectives on what this game is, and I'm going to try to manage both of them on some level in this review. But I've come to the conclusion if you wanted a generic review of Odyssey, you can go anywhere. If you want to see an Assassin's Creed purist pick apart this game, there's only a handful of people out there honest and willing enough to put themselves on the chopping block of fans to tell you the truth as to why Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a fine game, but at the same time proof that Assassin's Creed has never been so lost and Ubisoft is absolutely stoked about it. I'm not an assassin. Most casual fans won't see this review as most reviews have been out for a long time. I want to make this review as a message to all the Assassin's Creed hardcore fans out there. This is my thoughts on Odyssey. Shit, sorry, no, I meant Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Just a quick disclaimer before I get too far into this review, I will be showing footage from the first 15 to 20 hours of the game, therefore it may contain some minor spoilers, though I am still going to be selective with the footage I use to not overly make this spoilery. With that out of the way, let's get into this review. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a game that on its own stands as a lengthy open world ancient Greece RPG with fun customization, combat and stealth systems and a layered story that keeps you engaged for the most part of your 50 hour Odyssey. Sorry, I kinda had to do that. But as I've said many times in the lead up to the game, Odyssey has the weight of the name Assassin's Creed attached to it. And as an Assassin's Creed game, this could be the most troubling and detrimental game in the history of the franchise. A game that suddenly thrusts player choice into the franchise's already muddied ecosystem and continues to remove all the unique elements of Assassin's Creed and hoping no one will notice. Now trust me, I don't want to spend this whole video being negative or ripping on the game, though there's a lot of that that's going to happen in this video. Just bear with me as there's plenty of the game that I did like that I will be addressing. But if you're here for me to give it a 9 out of 10 or some obnoxiously ignorant score, then you're definitely in the wrong place. In fact, if you've seen many of my reviews, I almost never give scores, and that goes for this review as well. So let's start with the beginning of the game and go from there. Assassin's Creed Odyssey starts off with you, the player, picking between the two main character options of Alexios and Cassandra, which, like most RPGs, doesn't make a difference as they experience the same story, have the same personality, and have the exact same background. The protagonist you choose is a young mercenary on the Greek island of Cephalonia after being disgraced as a child Spartan and leaving your birth home. The character is pretty much a blank, boring canvas as it feels like Ubisoft really want you to put yourself into the character. The problem is Ubisoft don't give the player any significant choices in the game for probably the first 10 hours, and even then I wouldn't use the word significant to describe choices which made it hard for me to put myself into the game at all, let alone this blank character. The choices the game give you just don't feel all that important overall. So this blank boring canvas starts off the game and I was in desperate need for some sort of motivation to get me going, to make me want to play this story. Another problem with the early portion of the game is the fact that the characters are mercenary, therefore the motivation to do anything is money, which would work if there was an interesting character to back it up, however there is none. So there's just a weak motivation to do anything in the game and a blank canvas character to play as. I felt for a good long while that I really had no investment to play this story or game at all. I knew there was no becoming an assassin moment to wait for, there was just the hope that the storyline became interesting and the character started to form as I played. Thankfully the story did pick up and I developed an idea of who I am playing as. Problem was, it took about 12 to 15 hours to get into the real substance of the game, and that is just ridiculous. You have a game where there is no real substantive character motivation for almost 15 hours. To put that in perspective, for anyone who thinks that's not inexcusable, in 15 hours you could watch both seasons of Stranger Things in its entirety. You could watch the entire Lord of the Rings extended trilogy. 15 hours is a long time. 
with poor quality dialogue scenes and an underlying historical war that to reasons is never actually explained. And if you read up on it, it's actually really interesting. I honestly did not enjoy a lot of the first part of Odyssey. The best parts of the game early on are just the gameplay mechanics that we get in Origins. So why wouldn't I just play Origins? However, finally, there is a moment in the story where the game finally opens up. It is when you are introduced to the Cult of Cosmos. They are essentially the Templars of this game, and you are given a massive page in the pause menu of names of targets that you need to find clues for to hunt them down as your heart desires, and completely in your own time as they are spread throughout the world. Some you deal with in main missions, some in side missions, storylines, and others at your own leisure as you explore the world. This as a gameplay feature, not even as a story feature, was by far and away the best part of the game. To have this massive open world of targets where you don't know who they are or their location, just clues that lead to the targets, that lead to more clues to the next targets, that you in your own time can hunt down and kill, I absolutely loved. This system I honestly can't say enough good things about. I hope they continue to build on this system in future installments, especially since I couldn't help but feel how much better I would have enjoyed it if I'd been playing as an actual assassin and hunting down Templar targets with this sort of system. That is now all I want in the next game. So after 15 hours you have your ship, the story is set up, and you have the cult of dozens of targets all over Greece to hunt. The world really opens up and you can really make use of all the mechanics of the game as it was intended. The navel isn't as deep as Black Flag, but also isn't in your face as much. I found myself using my ship probably 5% of the game time tops, whereas Black Flag it's more like 40%. So that as a major feature felt balanced properly. The navel in this era isn't complex or deep enough to keep interesting for so many missions or gameplay moments. So I feel Ubisoft made the right choice making it a navigation tool and only sparingly using it in missions for combat purposes. While at the same time, if you love this game's naval, there's plenty of ships to battle and ocean to traverse. Combat and stealth are very similar to Origins as I've said in the past. The Origins stealth system and combat system isn't for everybody, but I believe it's by far the best in the franchise. Though Odyssey felt like a bit of a lesser version to what Origins did with it, I still had fun on that level and I enjoyed it for the most part. I said this in my gameplay impressions video before the game came out, and my thoughts on the combat never really changed. While the stealth had frustrating elements to it, as your assassinations do such little damage to high level enemies, that you really had to pick your battles, and combat was something that felt really forced later into the game. The abilities that come in are quite ridiculous as well. For a game that's supposed to be telling of real history that is unrecorded, these are some real MMO fantasy abilities that for the most part felt like it had no business being in an Assassin's Creed title. Some I could accept for story and character reasons, while there were certain abilities I never unlocked or used because they would absolutely break immersion to me as to how over the top they were, but each to their own in that case. Exploration and level grinding is a mixed bag in this game. Yes, I'm super OCD with games and I had no issues with levels, in fact I was always far too over leveled to where I was up to in the story as to when I saw others where they were playing that same story mission. Since when I arrive in a new region, I feel like I have to go around and complete every location, every objective, every side mission. I just do this out of habit and a desire to get all the achievements into 100% a game. It's, I'm weird, I get it. Much of it I enjoyed a lot though, with some side missions having their own storyline arcs, while other side missions just seem to be all the same. You do a favor for someone to get some information. To get that information, you need to go collect this item for someone else at a cave or a fort and then you just rinse and repeat that and put it in every location. That was the biggest problem with the exploration as well. I loved completing locations in Origins, but my biggest criticism with the game was every major point of interest in the game is marked. So if there's no marker, why would I be paying attention to it? You focus on getting from point A to point B and don't enjoy the journey. In fact, every location and point of interest kind of blends into one. Every cave, tomb, military camp and fort, pretty much all looks exactly the same and has the same objectives. And there are hundreds of them. It got really old after a while. But there are lots of amazing areas of the world visually speaking, and the viewpoints as always in Assassin's Creed titles highlight the world's creation. How expansive and beautiful it is. And Odyssey is beautiful. There are some great regions to look at, 
and admire, though I wouldn't say explore, other than just to find a viewpoint and go to the question marks that, again, all the same. I'd like to see other form of location markers, like with Skyrim, where they only even appear when you're very close to them on your map, and also have more detail put into them, not have the same recycled asset for every fort and camp and cave. There is so much potential for more with Odyssey in this open world, but it just felt quite lazy to me, seeing no real improvement from Origins as to how the open world works and the locations work. In fact, they were less unique and clearly more generic. It felt like developers thought the more icons they just throw on in an identical fashion of the world somehow would make it a good game. No, there needs to be care in each element and feature to be a high quality game. And before people tell me not to nitpick, it's not nitpicking when games 7 years ago were making more detailed RPG mechanics and interesting open worlds to explore. And games now are far superseding anything Ubisoft are making currently. Just look at God of War this year, or the forthcoming Red Dead Redemption 2. You can do better Ubisoft, and you should. Don't settle for mediocrity, because they've been doing that for a long time, with less than a handful of exceptions. Something I was really excited for was the region battles in Odyssey, which to play were no doubt a good time, lacked any reason or consequence as a player other than to get some gear to sell or dismantle, or some XP. I was hoping for more story reasons and investment in a side of the war you chose, but no, you have some battles in the story which are great, but mostly you have no real reason to involve yourself in any of them other than, again, money or XP. I would have loved some more story connection to those features of the open world. You have this whole world you've built consumed in war, and there's not only barely an explanation as to why it's happening, but for something that has so many mechanics connected to it, there is no real reason to be a part of it, nor consequence or conclusion with your involvement. It's almost pointless. Enough about the open world though, let's talk story, which surprisingly in Odyssey is actually quite good. Of course, with a game of its size, the pacing is inevitably all over the place, but that comes with any game with its design, so I give that the benefit of the doubt. After many hours of building up and lack of interest in the narrative, it finally found its footing in my eyes and really took off. In saying that, I mean it as an ancient Greece storyline. It was interesting, emotional, and gave enough twists, turns, and big moments to keep me engaged until the end. I enjoyed the various storylines going on at once that gave me time to jump between different characters and storylines and it always seemed to have some big moment or reveal on the horizon. But after playing it, I still don't really see the point or necessity for being called Assassin's Creed. The connection with the universe was quite minuscule and felt thrown in at the tail end so they could use that name in the title. People might feel differently, thinking it had major impact on the modern day, and I guess it did in a moronic and lazy way, while the story of Alexios and Cassandra in ancient Greece felt like a well-rounded and well-tied up storyline. The subsequent Assassin's Creed connection just left so much to be desired. Honestly, it feels as though Ubisoft hates Assassin's Creed. To play Assassin's Creed 1, or even God forgive me, Assassin's Creed Unity, and then play Odyssey. You wouldn't be able to believe you're still playing the same franchise. You had somewhat of a soft reboot of the franchise and Origins to give a start to a new modern day story, bring the open world action adventure franchise of Assassin's Creed and bring it a broader, more vibrant open world coded with new RPG mechanics to build the future of the franchise. Now with Odyssey you've thrown away all those Assassin's Creed elements that Origins had left in it, took those RPG stuff and are trying to make a poor man's Elder Scrolls game now. Origins was trying to be a modern Assassin's Creed open world story based RPG while Odyssey thought let's go back 10 years and make Skyrim an Assassin's Creed but with less interesting world and way more copy and paste of locations. The only Assassin's Creed elements left in this game are features that shouldn't be there for lore reasons like the leap of faith makes no sense being in there. The Animus which has just no defining technological explanation anymore. Like what is even the point of the Animus anymore? Ubisoft are solely focused on sales results now. They are copying models from every successful franchise and business out there and trying to mix it into this melting pot where it seems like nobody knows what to do with it or how to focus it. Where's the focus? 
Every game is so different at this point, and has a concept of where it's going, and then the next game shits on itself and does whatever it wants. Odyssey is just another example of the complete and total lack of cohesion between the various Ubisoft studios making these games. It's a mess. Ubisoft is so concerned with trying to be like everyone else, trying to make mainstream games media love them, that they're not doing anything as well as they should be. They're not trying to be innovative, and as a result, they've completely lost what Assassin's Creed is. They try to make elements from 10 different, more successful games, put it into Assassin's Creed features and hope it sticks. Now they've done it so much with this franchise that there are no Assassin's Creed elements left. It's just a knockoff of better titles, with the name Assassin's Creed at the front of it. Even though there are no Assassins or Creed to be seen in this game. Though there are Assassin's Creed nuthuggers out there that say, It's in the universe that continues the modern day, and there's the same gameplay as Origins, so yeah, it's Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, let me start by looking at the title of Assassin's Creed. I can definitely confirm there are no Assassins, and certainly no Creed. Any other brain busters, you utter imbeciles. I'm not the guy that's there that thinks Black Flag isn't an Assassin's Creed game because you're not playing as an Assassin. Black Flag has Assassins, Templars, the Creed. It just tells the story in the, probably the most unique way an Assassin's Creed game has gone about it. That's not the case with Odyssey. There's no Assassins. There's no Creed. And that doesn't mean Odyssey's a bad game because of it either. It's just not an Assassin's Creed game and it's that simple. I'd accept the title of Odyssey, set in the Assassin's Creed universe, but I mean, that wouldn't sell, that would sell seven copies. But Odyssey has taken an extreme direction in gameplay and story to what Origins set up. In my mind, as an Assassin's Creed fan, they have taken a completely wrong turn here. But as a game on its own, again, I have no doubt you can find hours upon hours of joy and fun in it. I certainly did. But I had to completely turn my Assassin's Creed brain off to it. As I said, there is definitely a lot to like about Odyssey. I enjoyed traversing the ancient Greek world as a warrior mercenary, having my own ship and crew, and playing through various stories and side story arcs of the world. The combat and stealth were fun, though a downgrade from Origins, and the Cult of Cosmos system was one of the best new features any Assassin's Creed game has had in a long time. But this game lacks polish. Interesting locations, has repetitive mission structure, and is definitely a lesser, more bloated sized Origins that certainly doesn't deserve to have the titled moniker of Assassin's Creed in it.